Should you buy a Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring? Hi there, I'm Justin Pritchard for MotorIllustrated.com and we're answering that question in this video. We'll take an up close look at the Aviator and its new plug-in hybrid powertrain, go for a drive and then examine it through our should you buy lens with a closer look at the key reasons why you should buy one and the key reasons why you shouldn't. I had an awful lot of fun shooting this one, and if you're new here, consider liking and subscribing down below so you never miss a new upload, and with that, let's begin. So, Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring, and this one's the top of the line model, which includes all of the good stuff, including a new plug-in hybrid powertrain that we'll be going over in a bit more detail shortly. So you get three seating rows, six seats in the case of this particular unit with its second row captain's chairs. And all of the chairs in here do something fancy. Up front, it's perfect position seating. Lincoln's 28-way adjustable seats can literally form fit your backside like almost nothing else on the road. They have heat, cool, massage, individually adjustable thigh bolsters, you name it. Literally, these are some of the fanciest seats you'll find in probably anything. Second row seats. Comfortable, plenty of room for adults, good storage nearby to keep tidy on the go. And further back, these third row seats are not adult friendly, I'd say usable but not great if you're a grown up like me. Probably fine for the kids, but my favorite was just power folding them down and using the Aviator as a four seater with a ton of cargo room. Here's a bit more detail on the interior. It looks and feels the business, really high end and not much you can look at or touch in here doesn't feel authentic and top of the line. And the look is relaxing and sort of minimal. You can see how they've put the main controls down here out of your view on this tightly clustered pad. And that makes it easy to use all of this stuff with one hand and no eyes once your fingers learn where everything is but also it keeps those buttons out of the forward scenery while you're driving so you can see more of the lovely dash and the materials it's built from. Under the hood, it's a three liter twin turbo V6 with the plug-in hybrid driveline adding electrification. With a big battery and electric motor system added to the gasoline driveline, you've got a rolling hydro station that makes its own juice which it can use to boost the engine's power or drive without using the engine at all. It's a win-win situation. The Aviator plug-in hybrid is not only more fuel efficient, it's also the most powerful one you can buy. You get just about 500 horsepower and a massive 630 pounds of torque. And if you like, you can even plug this one in to recharge. Though the engine generates enough electricity to keep it running as its own gas-electric hybrid, the battery has enough room to store loads more juice if you connect it to a charger. Enough juice, actually, that you can drive about 35 kilometers at a time in fully electric mode. So two key things to remember about plug-in hybrids like this one, which you will be seeing a lot more of in the coming years. The first is that you've got the opportunity for fuel-free commuting, depending on where you live and where you drive. And if you plug in regularly at home and at work, you might go from visiting the gas station a few times a month to a few times a year. And the other important thing to remember is that plugging in is never mandatory. In a plug-in hybrid, as long as you've got gas in the tank, you are good to go. So it's an electric crossover, a hybrid crossover, and a big comfy rocket ship all in one. Interesting combination. Of course, that leaves us to just one question, should you buy? And so we'll wrap this up with a look at three reasons you should buy and three reasons you should not. And we'll start with the three reasons you should not buy first. That's the three reasons this might not be the best way to spend the dollars if you're shopping in this segment. First, the fun factor. Now, Aviator Grand Touring has a lot of power. It's also very heavy. So boot down, it still moves in a serious hurry. But on handling and steering and braking, and the overall way the Aviator responds to your other inputs, it tends to be soft and subdued. Meaning that if you're a sportier driver who appreciates feel and feedback from the controls, you've got better choices. Second, it is pricey, and this model's sticker includes the plug-in hybrid system which adds thousands to the cost. You can opt for a non-hybrid model if you like, which will make the price more reasonable. 
If you're dropping nearly six figures on a machine like this one, you've got a ton of excellent choices, this being one of them, but it's all up to your preferences. And third, the instrument cluster and drive mode selector and the interface between the two. The cluster to me being digital should look futuristic and cutting edge, and I think you'll agree this one just doesn't. Parts of it are brown, most of it's just empty, it's not so special to look at, even though it puts on a show for you when you change the drive modes. But there's still a bit of a delay, and the dial is free spinning, so it can be a little fussy until you get used to it all. And now we'll look at the key reasons that you should buy. That is, the reasons that this is a great way to spend your money if you're shopping this segment. Number one, it goes above and beyond on driving comfort. As long as you're not on very rough roads, the ride quality of this thing is just bang on. It's one of the smoothest highway rides I've ever come across. It's also quiet and relaxing and really just a perfect place to unwind. They've created an authentic environment for you to just unwind and decompress, and even at higher speeds, you feel like you're just quietly hovering over the road. Aviator runs some very sophisticated suspension technologies to keep the ride comfy, including a camera feed that can actually warn the shocks to take action just ahead of an impending pothole strike, and it literally rides on a cloud of air. If you have really, really rough roads where you live, I would suggest visiting some on your test drive though. Aviator is a ride quality expert on most surfaces, but the rougher ones resulted in more noise and harshness than I was expecting. Second reason you should buy, the technology. First, it's all here, all the safety equipment, connectivity, you can even use your smartphone as the keys and leave the real keys at home if you like. And much of the tech is nicely executed too. Approachable, easy to learn, fairly interactive, and really, after a few days of learning how to work everything, you'll be impressed with how much technological horsepower is right at your fingertips. And third reason you should buy, the fuel economy. Now, your results may vary, but staying very close to home for two weeks during the pandemic saw me recharge every night, arrive to a full battery every morning, and do all of my daily photo shoots without using a drop of fuel. Then I made a 450 kilometer highway drive, so you switch from fuel-free to long distance cruiser effortlessly. Doing your daily errands or commuting without using any fuel and of course in total electric vehicle silence is something that can really grow on you. Thank you for watching. My name is Justin Pritchard for MotorIllustrated.com and we will see you in the next video.